When you're getting started in home audio, there's a ton of terminology to get your head around. And while we can't cover everything in one video, we wanted to go through some basic terms so that you have a solid audio terminology foundation. So without further ado, here's the Fluence Guide to Audio Terms, Part 1. Component A component is essentially every piece of your hi-fi setup. Components include the speakers, the source, such as your turntable, CD player, cassette deck, or TV, the amplifier or receiver. This takes the signal from the source and adds gain so that it can power the speakers. The preamp or preamplifier. A preamp takes a phono level signal and boosts the signal to line level before it gets to the amplifier. Now, while we're talking components, you may be wondering what the difference is between an amplifier and receiver. An amplifier typically has one job, which is to take the signal and boost the volume to push it through the speakers. A receiver does this and also takes care of things like routing, volume control, input selection, and EQ. It may also have sources like Bluetooth or a radio tuner built right in. Powered versus passive speakers. Powered speakers, which can also be known as active speakers, have an amplifier built in. This lets you go straight from your source into the speaker without the need of a receiver. This also lets us add features like Bluetooth playback that we wouldn't be able to add to a passive speaker. Passive speakers are powered by an external amplifier. Driver. A driver is a round, cone-shaped element that moves back and forth to create sound. There are different types of drivers. A tweeter that handles frequencies roughly above 2000 Hz, mid-range that handles frequencies from about 200 Hz to 2000 Hz, and a woofer which handles the lower sub-200 frequencies. Speaker Types Subwoofer Subwoofers take care of the really low frequencies. They're the speakers that make your windows rattle when you're watching a movie and there's a really big explosion. They typically handle around 80 Hz or less. Floor Standing these sit directly on the floor without a stand. They're also referred to as tower speakers just because, well, they look like towers. Because of the bigger enclosure, they tend to produce more bass. Bookshelf speakers have a smaller enclosure than floor standing. They normally include two drivers. In surround sound setups, they can be used as front or rear speakers. The center channel is part of the surround sound system and usually sits below the television. The purpose of these speakers is dialogue and vocal clarity. Bipolar. These speakers are arranged in pairs, with drivers firing in sync, facing opposite directions. Listeners won't hear sound directly in front of the speaker. Instead, they will hear sound reflected off the walls, which makes it sound more spacious. These are usually used as side or rear channels in a surround sound setup. Crossover. A crossover is a part of any multi-driver speaker. It's a piece of hardware that directs specific frequencies to specific drivers. These speakers are determined by the speaker designer. The crossover essentially tells the speaker, okay, anything above 2000 Hertz, you go to the tweeter. Anything below 2000 Hertz, you go to the woofer. Surround sound configurations. Surround sound configurations are expressed in a number dot another number configuration, where the first number is the number of speakers and the second is the number of subwoofers. 2.0, for example, is two speakers and no subwoofer. 5.1 is five channels, usually two in the front to center and two rears, and a subwoofer. 7.2 is seven channels and two subwoofers and so on. If you see a third number, it's referring to a Dolby Atmos setup. Dolby Atmos adds height to a surround sound configuration, and those height channels are represented with the last number. Binding Posts You use binding posts to connect the speaker wire from the speakers to the receiver. You can either unscrew the terminals and connect the wire like so, or you can use banana plugs, spade connectors, alligator clips, or pin connectors. Sealed and Ported Speakers Sealed and ported refer to different types of speaker enclosures. Sealed enclosures are, as the name suggests, completely sealed. In sealed speakers, as the driver moves back and forth, the air pressure in the speaker changes. The extra pressure makes the driver go back and forth faster, 
which gives you a crisper sound. Ported speakers have an opening that equalizes pressure between the inside and outside of the speaker. You may get less accurate sound with a ported speaker, but you get more naturally loud bass. DSP, Digital Signal Processing. This is software that will take a signal from the amplifier and tweak it to achieve a certain goal. As a practical example, if you have a set of speakers that produce a good frequency response, but would like to have more lower frequencies, you can utilize DSP to increase or decrease the desired frequencies, or smooth out the peaks and valleys. Impedance. Impedance is a rating that is given to both speakers and receivers. Rated in ohms, they are usually in increments of twos, four ohms, eight ohms, 16 ohms, etc. The simplest way to understand impedance is to think of a hose. The lower the number, the bigger the hose, the more signal that can flow through. The larger the number, the smaller the hose, the less signal that can flow through. You may be thinking, well, I'm going to get the speakers with the biggest hose I can find, but it's important to note that the bigger the hose, the more power it requires from the receiver to push that water through. So the number of ohms doesn't mean the components are necessarily better or worse, Instead, we should be paying more attention to finding a receiver that better matches your speakers. Impedance works in tandem with power handling. This is measured in watts. On speakers, the two specs to make note of are RMS and peak. RMS, or root mean square, is the average amount of power that the speaker can handle continuously. Peak watts is the absolute maximum that it can handle, and that is only for a brief moment. So, a speaker that is rated at 120 watts RMS and 300 watt peak can handle 120 watts on average with very brief bursts up to 300 watts. If there are any other terms that you're curious about, please feel free to leave a comment and let us know. We'll make note of it and cover it in a future video. And to make sure you see that video, be sure to hit subscribe and click that notification bell. As always, Thank you very much for taking the time to watch our videos.